welcome to the Improv. Some of as always, I'm your host, Spencer. And with me today, I have a very special guest. Now, I always say I have a very special guest, so I have to change it up every week because every guest truly is very special. So what I do is I take the person's name, the first letter of their first name, and I put an adjective in front of it like the old improv game. So today I have with me awesome Andrew. I was trying to think of another oh. one, and I couldn't like think of one. I was like trying to think of something different and exciting, but it's awesome You're because you're awesome. This is perfect, and playing, uh, doing that exercise, it always ends up being awesome, Andrew. Anyway, awesome or amazing, <laughs> or yeah. <laughs> mine is always, mine is always super Spencer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> one time I had a suggestion of being slithery Spencer, and I went, mm, I don't like that. It just doesn't feel right, even though it's an arbitrary game that has no real like stakes. At stakes. All. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, slither, Ugh. slithering Spencer, does not work. It's got to be super Spencer. Or, like, something else. So it just became a thing. Anyway, this show is not about me. It's about my guest, my very special guest, awesome Andrew, that I have today. So, Andrew, let's talk about you and your improv experience. What is your improv experience? Uh, whatever you want to tell us about. Okay. So I've actually done improv for quite a long time. I'm guessing maybe 10 years or so now. Um, I started off... Uh, at a place called ITC in Toronto, which is now defunct. And that was the first place that I had seen uh, do long form improv because I was I went to the UCB and saw some shows there and I was like, oh, this is amazing. And that's the kind of improv I want to do. Um, and so I went to ITC that shut down. Then I went to uh, Second City and a place called Bad, Bad Dog Theater. And I got hooked. Uh, I really liked. Uh, I really liked improv. So then I went to Chicago I/O for two weeks, and I did uh, their intensive because I couldn't do the full program, obviously, because I live in Toronto. Um, and then I took intervals doing uh, both um, UCB 101 in LA, Los Angeles, and then 102 with uh, in New York. Uh, and then I actually did a UCB. I finished it up because uh, uh, after years, I finished it up with you, which was really nice. Yeah, we um, did 301 and 401. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm also... Which, by the way, I, half the program, for those that don't know, that's literally half of the UCB yeah, program. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it wasn't an intensive, so we really got to like do the week-to-week -week thing, which was really nice. Yeah, I did the, um, I did the one, 101 one. Sorry, I'm like now talking about myself. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, go, go for it. But I did, I did the one week intensive for the 101 at UCB because I was, I already done like IO and like in Second City and I was like 101, like, come on. And so it was a class in the morning for three hours and a class in the afternoon for three hours. So it was just six hours of class every day. And I was like, it was done in a week, but I was like, I had, I was like improv out. <laughs> that's, that's the same thing I did for 101 and 102. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's a, yeah. Cause I only had a limited time. So it was like, I had to oh, sure. make it work. Um, and th yeah, and then I, I went back to Second City and I did uh, I did their conservatory program. Then years later, after doing lots of shows, shows and stuff, uh, I eventually did like Second City Touring Company and I did Second City Main Stage, but I did it over the pandemic. So it we opened and the show shut down. So ah. anyway, yeah, but oh, I, yeah, I that sounds like the worst. We're, we're waiting for it to reopen here because uh, the there's uh, they don't have a building right now here because th it was supposed to be built. The new building was supposed to be built during the pandemic. Right. Obviously, everything's slowed down. So hopefully I'll get to uh, do that again. But I get to be alumni no matter what. So that's yeah, that's, that's great. And yeah, that's it's like a, a, I.O. closing like right in the middle of people's like show runs. So they didn't technically. Yeah get to graduate from IO and I'm like, that's a big bummer. But then I'm also like, I saw 228 unused intern hours over there. So what do I do with those? Oh shoot. What are intern yeah. hours? How do, how do those work? Oh, uh, well, sorry, work study, legally work study yeah. hours. Um, well, uh, so I took the whole program at IO, um, all the way through and I was the Twitter like work study at one point. So I was doing social media, uh, which was great. Cause I was like, let me contact like, you know, the different teams and kind of like see what they got going on get pictures, kind of post that and engage on Twitter. So I was doing that every week, you know, and for several hours a week and then I would build up hours. And I was like, once I go through the program, I can go back and retake the classes yeah. and like jump in and take classes. And then it closed. And I was like, what do I do with these like 200 hours that I've accumulated over time? Uh, which I guess the answer is nothing. 
Um, but basically, the work study works yeah. as it does at UCB. I did work study at UCB Second City and uh, IO. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I also got scholarships for Impro and UCB, really trying hard. Um, yeah. But with the work study, um, you basically work a certain amount of hours, and those equate to a number of dollars per hour, which then equates to uh, signing up to take classes and you use your hours to go towards classes. Oh, right uh, on. One time, one time at IO, uh, they canceled our class because it was three interns that signed up. So no one was paying for the class. <laughs> we were all paying an hour. So they were like, uh, we're going to cancel this because there's only three interns that signed up. Uh, oh, so then they put, us, so they put us in a different class that had actual paying improvisers. But it was just funny that it was only the inf- only the interns that signed up for that. <laughs> but anyway, but that was that. But yeah, um, I was gonna say yeah, there are people at I O that like it closed like in the middle of their like run of shows or yeah. they finished their classes, and so I guess technically they didn't actually graduate because they didn't finish their five B, which I think is like that's kind of like come on. Yeah, you should get if it's closing, you should get an instant <laughs> graduation. Or also. Or also like trying to like wait until the semester's over, like wait until the term is over to like close yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> close Come it just on, in Charna. the middle of. Yeah. Like maybe. I don't. Maybe that I wish he had gone online. online. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what oh, you boy. saying? You wish he hadn't what? I wish she should. I mean, I mean, there, there's a whole you know controversy and whatever. Second City went through it too, but like, I, I mean, she should have continued. I like moved it online, changed around a little bit. It's yeah. you know. Well, I also, it was also funny because when IO closed, it was funny because someone, I was on social media, right? And I talked to Zach about this before, who was unfortunately the last, like, managing director before it closed. Yeah. Uh, And it was funny because at one point, someone, I went, I was at, I think it was at Second City, someone goes, did you hear IO's closing? And I went, I'm on social media. There's no way I wouldn't know that and other people know that. So I emailed Zach and I went, Hey, just out of curiosity, I heard the IO's closing and like, should we post about that on social media or like, what's the plan for that? And then like an hour later, this long email, like, hey, uh, as of right now, no one work. Uh, thanks. Uh, we're closing. Uh, <laughs> it was like this yeah. big, like, I was like, oh, yikes. Um, but IO was the first place that I went to. So it has like a very special place in my heart, which is why yeah. it like, which is why I like joke about it a lot of like its closure and like it's such a bummer because it was a place for me that I found my confidence in myself through improv. And so it's like such a bummer to me that like the place that I grew, that I grew to love is like no longer there. But I guess that's just the memories I'll have will be forever. So whatever, it's just a building, right? It, yeah, it's just a building, (laughs) but you know, it's, it's still, you know, whenever, whenever they shut down or go away, you know, a part of you is like, you can never go back to that. So, right. Exactly. Well, that being said, um, what do you love about improv? What what keeps you doing improv? What keeps you coming back to? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the places that aren't. Uh... Yeah, no, no. Uh, I no, I love improv. Uh, what keeps me coming back to it is, I, I find like it's always, even when it's even when you have like that horrible show and you're like why am I doing this? <laughs> then you still want to come back to it. Uh, there's mm-hmm. something fun about it. There's something so good about being able to like, really like, once you train and learn to like, listen and work with other people and you get like, get those muscles exercised. It's there's something addictive about it. There's something you're you truly have to be in the moment and the more mo- in the moment you are the better you are at it so it's like it turns off a a part of your brain as well and obviously there's something so good about having like those endorphins or serotonin released you know being Mm -hmm. on stage with your friends making each other laugh and like finding these like you know really nice connections um of course when it goes well in front of an audience that's always a plus too (laughs) yeah oh for sure 100 percent. i love Um, that um no you go ahead. We both said um oh, at yeah. the same time. I just want to point that out. Uh, yeah. Mind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, group mind. Uh, <laughs> got yeah, it, got it. <laughs> I just feel like it's it's you can get into like this really nice flow state as well um, sometimes. So I think it's it's that and it's coming back and there's a community there. I mean, honestly, that's probably an even bigger part of it. I think the community that you build of all these different people who end up becoming, you know, successful actors or writers or 
you know, working in the industry in other ways. That, that is also the, one of the downfalls of improv. I love improv so much, but sometimes people do get caught up in the improv aspect of it mm -hmm. and forget that it's also a, a, a tool and a learning tool to like move on to other things as well, because mm -hmm. it's just so addictive and fun. But <laughs> ain't it the truth? Ain't it yeah. the truth? Uh, that's what we say in the South. Ain't it the truth? That's ain't it the truth? <laughs> Bless your heart. I say that a lot too. Still. Oh, gosh. Bless her heart. Bless oh. his heart. Bless your yeah. heart. I say y'all. It's funny. I had one time. I was in California, where I am currently, and I went. Y'all got this, and everyone goes, "What did you just say?" And I was like, "Y'all." I'm like, no one's ever heard of it. I'm like, how have you never heard of y'all? But I'm like, really I guess it's, in California. It's like a, yeah, but I, get, I I hear it a lot now, but. Yeah when I first was here, like where I was, I was like, has no one just ever heard of it? Is this really a Southern thing? And then I realized sweet tea is actually a Southern thing and people don't know what that is in LA. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, this is the Southern sweet tea. And I'm like, why is there milk in it? You don't put milk in tea. That's what? weird. Like, <laughs> that's not, that's milk tea. That's not sweet tea. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's sweet, I guess, because there's milk in it. Yeah, but it's not milk has sugar. <laughs> tea. And you gotta put the sugar in it. You put whatever and you stick it out in the sunlight, the sun tea. That's like, that's like the way you do it. Anyway, uh, on the Improv Summit <laughs> sweet tea edition, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. we talked about my rankings of my favorite fast food sweet teas from top to bottom. Uh, mm. And when I don't have sweet tea for a whole week, I lose five pounds. It's Who's number time. one? Wait, who, what, what's the number one sweet tea, fast food sweet it's, tea? So, I would say Zaxby's. Oh, I don't, we don't have but Zaxby's. No one, no one knows Zaxby's. It's a... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Zaxby's used to be, it, it's like, it's like Chick-fil-A that doesn't have a lot of controversy surrounding it. Um, <laughs> Where it's just like chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers, and salads with chicken in them. Um, and like their sides are like fries and like uh, coleslaw and like veggies. Um, yeah. So very minimal menu. Uh, they got great spices. A Zach sauce, which is very much like a, like a mayo, chipotle, whatever sauce, you know. Um, but their sweet tea is really tasty. And they used to be Miami subs, which no one knows about. <laughs> they don't have Miami subs anymore. Um, but there's like very minimal locations, like I think East Coast, South, and mostly the Southeast is where yeah. they are. Anyway, that's my number one ranking. Um, uh, I, I I don't even have access to a Zaxby's, but I will next time I see a Zaxby's, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll make sure. To Florida, stop. you can find one for sure. Like Florida, Georgia, Texas, I think is done. Like I'll go to Florida um, Improv Festival and hit up that Zaxby's. So Great. hard. <laughs> make sure you go right through the. Make sure you go right through the Panhandle. That's where my hometown is. Right yeah. in that Panhandle of fun. Uh, Zaxby's, do they, are they sitting this sweet tea out in the sun? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't even know if they like yeah. do it. Commercially sitting it out in the sun. Uh, uh, fun story about Zaxby's on the Improv Summit, Zaxby's edition. Um, I was with some friends once at Zaxby's and we were getting ready to leave and one guy was standing outside and I thought he was holding the door open for me. Mm. So I see him and I just walk like towards him and I slam into a window. Cause he was outside and like his, it was his, he was outside of a window. I literally thought he was just holding the door open. So I just went boom into the oh, window yeah. and I literally knock over the wet floor sign and I see all the employees just come running. Are you okay? And I was like, it's fine. I just walked into a window, like no big deal. We're good. Bye. And like, I just like walked out the door and they, I saw like afterwards, like I kind of looked back and they were all just kind of like, what just happened? Like I just oh, man. hit like hardcore, like full force into the window. And then my friend's I'm like, dead. what happened? I'm like, I thought you were holding the door open. <laughs> it was just like a whole no. mess. And it like, it was just a lot, but I've also run into like poles. So, I mean, it's not like, yeah, I may, I may be clumsy and like not observant, but I'm very observant. Yeah. When yeah. Comes to, when it comes to things that I'm not like running into. Yeah. But like, when you, it's a, not a physical obstacle. Yeah. You know, it. It. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then otherwise, nope, not going to happen. Uh, anyway, so we've been talking a lot about Zaxby's and Sweet Tea and my mm -hmm. clients, but let's talk about you and your improv experience, shall we? Let's, okay. let's redirect it back uh, with my okay. my love segues of fun. Um, so this question is more about improv and like I, a lot of times I forget what I do in an improv scene, especially when I'm doing a Herald and you bring my character back for the second beat. I'm like, what did I do? I don't even remember what my like. I yeah. will not remember because it just goes out of my head. However, there are moments where I remember when I have really good scenes or when I watch something on stage that I'm like, ah, oh, this two-person scene or like this group scene was so good. 
are there any moments for you that either you remember as a performer at, or as an audience member or a player or an improviser, whatever it is, that you're like, this scene I just remember because of X, Y, Z? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> and you might not. because there, so oh, there, there is one. That I, it's so stupid. I, I, don't, like, I don't even remember what it is. It was, it, there was nothing, you know, conventionally technical or genius about it. I'm sure, I'm sure it must have hit a game in some way, but it was just like, oh, frick, what was it? it was like, my, my, my character was just talking about like, oh, it's gotta be a big apple pie. I, it's one of those stupid things where it just hit something. I don't know, but it was, it, there was nothing. I don't think, I don't even know if there was a game to it. There, there must've been, but uh, that, I, I think of that and I think of that moment and it, it makes me laugh. But as far as like, I all that stuff goes out of my mind. I don't. I can't go back to a lot of scenes. I, as soon as this ends, I'll be like, oh, you know, that's what I, I should have talked about this amazing scene. Um, but not off the top of my head. There's not like one big moment. Do you have a lot of those? Do you? I will say. Uh, I'll just say. Um, it's been said on the show before, but one of my main ones yeah. is doing an improv audition where I had auditioned for this troupe like multiple times. And I finally got in at this time because I, I started to pick up on improv auditions being like just having fun. And I remember the suggestion, we're doing Foursquare and I went, oh, scenic games, oh, not my best. And then I was like, why am I saying that? Like, I need to like enjoy what I'm doing. So I was like, yeah. what can I do that's good? And like the suggestion we got, I think was like lawyer or something like that. And I went, okay, a lawyer is like a high status character. I was like, what if I just like do a physical choice? I'm gonna make a physical choice. Because a lot of times when I start talking in improv, I like don't know what's going on. So I, I don't know what's going on. I just start to Capricorn my way through a line. Yeah. Um, and so, which for those that don't know, that means I like literally stumble through it until I figure out what I'm trying to say. And then it just becomes a whole long thing. But uh, like I'm explaining, um, but I remember I just went down and I laid on the stage and just like started flailing like my arms and my scene partner comes in and says, sir, I know it's been a long day, but we still have to get back and do some more of these cases. And I just went, Oh, just five more minutes, please. I just need a break. And like, I was so fun. I will never forget it because yeah. it was a moment where I went, this is taking a concept of a lawyer and flipping it on its head, but also allowing me to play with what I'm good at. Yeah. Instead of feeling like I have to do something that I'm not like great at by using that suggestion to its exact moment. I just started flailing. I didn't even say anything. I didn't do anything. I just started flailing. And so the suggestion, the the line that I got, I was like, oh, I can do this. This is easy because I could just keep doing what I was doing. And so that was that was like a big moment for me as a performer yeah. when something uh, clicked. Yeah, that's amazing. That, that's that's, that's amazing. what I have to say. Um, I, that being said, I, oh, oh yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I do. I I just remembered. I great. I'm glad I, I, I I'm glad I got. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the flailing. I'm like, okay, physical. Oh, yeah. So I had a I had a group that I was in, just me and one other guy. Um, called Bamboo Kids Club, and it was um, it was like organic, like the the it was improv, but the, all the transitions were organic movements and like sound and movement kind of things, and so it was it's incredibly physically, it, as far as improv goes, a physically demanding uh, kind of uh, format that we had. Uh, so, but we were in Detroit Improv Festival. I I can't remember a lot of the scenes, but it was just like we we gave it 110% and it was like, it, it, it was the, I would say one of the best like responses. Uh, so it was like, we were drenched. I was drenched. My shirt was completely wet after and the, and it was funny. Thank goodness. It wasn't just physical. It was actually funny. Uh, <laughs> um, it's always helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but like, I felt like, a, a, a king after that weekend because everybody mm -hmm. was like, oh, incredible, incredible, incredible. Uh, so <laughs> that was one of, that is a moment that stands out for me in my improv history of like, really, like you're saying, giving it your all and like, you know, getting that, whatever that kind of thing that you bring to the table that no one else is doing out. And no one else was doing that at the time. I still haven't seen that level of physicality, which we originally, uh, didn't rip off, but stole from doppelganger, you know, you know, Oh them. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause we, we stole like, we're like, Oh, uh, I, that those physical transitions are interesting. <laughs> and, uh, but then we just went like to like, took Maybe it. I'll to just another. do it. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
but yeah, that's a that was that yeah, was a awesome. good one. Yeah, that's great. Sorry, I was looking for my mic, which I usually have for the show, and I just now realized I didn't have it. But, you, you lost know, the a, mic. Is, is uh, there sound on this? <laughs> Did no, there, no, there's no there's sound. I just it'll now flip and it'll sound a lot better uh, oh, okay. later. I'm gonna put it on while you. If you have any plugs or pitches, anything. Yeah. You- Okay, the time. check out my Instagram <laughs> at Andrew Michelle. <laughs> You'll see uh, one picture every six months. Oh, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be just okay. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, great. Uh, yeah. well, the last question I have for you, Andrew, again, thanks for mm-hmm. joining me here on the Improv Summit, is the reason why the Improv Summit exists. Prior to pandemic, but even now with pandemic and places just going um, online, you can literally take improv from anywhere. Yes. So it makes making improv choices a lot harder as far as where to go. And so one of the questions I always get is, Spencer, you take a lot of improv. Where should I take improv? And it's a hard question for me to answer for many different factors. But if someone came up to you and said, Andrew, where should I take improv? What would be one piece of advice or one tidbit you'd give to someone to help guide them on their improv journey? Okay. Uh, I, I have so many thoughts on this. Uh, I know, I'll tell right? you... It's like a whole conversation. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you my favorite um, was probably uh, the one that really made a lot of stuff click for me and get me to where I needed to be was UCB. And I'm just talking about like 101, 102 and watching the shows that they had Um, because I learned a lot from like watching the types of shows they had and the way they did their format and what I found personally funny. And I really like that. Um, so if you're looking, I would say if you're looking to just like learn some technique with other people who are going to play the way you will be playing, then I think UCB is great because there's a common language and like a way of doing things so that no matter who you're playing with, who is trained in UCB, they will know what you're talking about. Um, now. Second City also pays me, and I, <laughs> and I, so uh, of course, yeah. And so I want to say, and this is not, this is not a lie. Uh, I I think where Second what UCB doesn't do uh, is like it. Second City has a lot more variety. You're coming from more of a uh, you know a point of view of like uh, you know what are we saying about the world? What are we saying? Uh, about society or it more of that kind of mindset and it also is more free so you're not necessarily looking always at game which is what we look a lot at in ucb uh you get to look harder into things like character and you know you know being physical and doing things like that and uh really like stage picture and things like this i Mm -hmm. where that is not the main focus of ucb um, but for me, that was something that I think I had a lot of the Second City stuff already. So the UCB stuff was something that made it click and be like, oh, now I can use this theory and bring all those things together. And now sure. it, it, it's going to be good, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, even even on that, like I'll say the one thing that Second City does that I haven't seen any other uh, place do is re-improvisation, which I didn't realize was a thing until I took the conservatory program. And I think that I actually I actually love re-improvisation. Yeah. Because it allows me to be like, ah, I messed up that improv scene and go, that's okay, I can do it again, <laughs> but better. Um, but really, it is a fun way to explore how to turn an improv scene into a sketch, like, yes. ultimately. And, and so I love re-improvisation, which I think, uh, since, you're, since you're a little biased because you work there, I'm also vouching for Second City in that, in that <laughs> regard of um, re-improvisation. But um, as someone who works on premium shows there, but that's a little, I think it's a little different. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just performing. Um, but yeah, but it's, uh, I, I would agree with that. Uh, I will that say regard. to, to speak to that, which is, I think incredible. And, uh, I think everyone should know is second city. They, they, uh, well, during the pandemic, it was a little bit different, but, um, they generally don't write their sketches. So it is only done through reimprovisation. Mm-hmm. And when it, uh, most of the time, I believe when the actual script gets written for the first time is after the opening. And it is transcribed, and that's that's where you get like the uh, where you go back and look at old scripts and things like that. It is not because someone literally wrote it out. It is because it is has been performed and performed and performed to this point 
now that it can be transcribed because they're probably going to hit the same things. But even when you watch a main stage show in like Chicago or Toronto, they're going to be still probably have some room for that improv to have fun with each other. And that's where you get like yeah. still get that magic after performing it for 300 times or whatever. Um, so yeah, re-improvisation yeah. I think is my favorite way of doing sketch. Uh, yeah, better than, I don't know, for me, I can't sit down at a well, computer. <laughs> I was going to say, I also don't have to write anything down. I just get some yeah. notes and go, okay, great, let me do it again. <laughs> I yeah. don't have to worry yeah, about yeah, writing yeah. it down. But then that, that's what makes, that's what's so wonderful. I think about improv is, is improv can be done really as a re-improvisation in, into an intro in the sketch as its own improv show. So I think that that's a really great aspect that you've brought up uh, that we've kind of been discussing. But Andrew, this has been wonderful. Thank you for joining me here on the Improv Summit. Um, as always, I said that was the last question I have on the Improv Summit. But in general, and actually I think every time I've been a big liar about it. <laughs> okay. uh, so just like Paul Giamatti's big fat liar, of which I am now one, mm -hmm. uh, I have to ask you, we've been talking a lot about improv. You want to do some improv? Let's, uh, yeah, let's do some improv. Let's do it. Yes, and Drew's going to be joining us. Ha, huh, there it was. I finally got it in there. Just I, <laughs> Great. <laughs> let's do some improv. Would you like a location, a relationship, or a word? Let's try, uh, let's try a relationship. Great, I'm going to give you two, and you tell me which one you want to go with. All righty. The suggestions are... A lumberjack and his wife... Or a politician and a big donor. Oh, let's do politician and a big donor. Great. All right. Uh, here we go. Let's do it. Oh, who do you want to initiate this scene? Um, did you initiate last time? I can in initiate this. I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll initiate. I'll initiate. Okay, great. All right. Uh, sounds good. Well, well, well. You enjoying the steak? It's yeah, it's nice. Good, good. Nice enough for a uh, nice enough for a uh, congressional vote. I mean, potentially. I mean, I got to see what, uh, where everyone lies with their with their beliefs and their thoughts and ideals before I make a decision. But was the steak not cooked to your liking? Oh, the steak was great. I really appreciate the steak. It was it was great. Was there not enough accoutrements? Um, no, it was fine. There were plenty of plenty of sides and plenty of garnishes. Okay, that's plenty of that's pretty pretty funny to me because if you liked it, I think I would be able to rely on your congressional vote. Without a we'll see, we'll wait and see. Well, I mean, if I'm being completely candid, most candidates will offer me steak or any other kind of meals to like kind of ask for my vote, which is why I can't make a decision based solely on on food, I have to really think about the thoughts, ideas, beliefs, and ideals that each candidate has. You take that. I, now that I is can't. cold, hard cash in the version of a form check. Form of a check. Yeah, in the form I, I see of a that. check. But you yeah, know I'm that. good for it. How much is it? It's $200. Now that's. See, and here's. Here's the thing. It? It's going to take more than $200 and a, and a steak to get my vote because I'm, I'm really going off of people's ideals, beliefs, ideals, and, and, and what they believe in, ultimately. So yeah. if, you, if your beliefs match and align with my beliefs, then that's how you will get my vote. Okay, so you're saying it's going to take more than $200. Du I'll double it. I'll double well, it's, it. It's not, both the, it's both the money and the steak. You can take the bribe. steak home for your wife and kids to share. I don't, it's not the bribe. It's, you it's, guys can all honestly, split it. You can split the steak at home, and I'll I'll even double the accoutrements if that's your. Oh, you're really, you're you're really kicking me while I'm down, aren't you? I, I'm just saying that it's it, it doesn't. I, I don't need you to give me any more objects. I just need you to tell me what your beliefs and values and ideals are, because that's who I vote specifically okay. on is what the beliefs are. You know what? Screw you. You can here. Here you. Here's what I'm gonna do for you. See these. See these keys. See these mm -hmm. keys. These are the keys to my Audi. Okay. One week. That's for you I, and your family and your kids to drive around 
you know, go go to go to the movie theater, go to the cinema, see a movie. You can sit on the hood of my car, act like it's yours, okay? I don't, I don't, I don't want your Audi. I, I don't want anything from you. I just want to know what your beliefs and your values and ideals and thoughts are. That's I believe that I would value your congressional vote. And why? Why would you? Why would you value it? So I can have the power to do as I please in Congress. So if I, but if I did, like if I, if I was to tell you I'd give you my vote, would you keep giving me all of this fancy stuff? Well, ultimately it would probably, that would be the end of what, wherever we settled that, that would be it. Got it. I'll tell you what. Uh, you got my vote. Thank you for your honesty. There we go. Now, now I hope your family enjoys that steak. See? No, I don't want the steak. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody so much for coming to the Improv Summit. That's Andrew. I'm Spencer. See you next time. Bye. Bye.